For the last year, I've been on a quest to complete all the Star Wars vintage action figures. Inside this box is the last action figure that I need to complete my journey. Today, that journey ends. And if you have followed my journey, then you know that one action figure has always evaded me. And if you are one of the people in the Facebook groups that I belong to, then you've seen me buy countless action figures throughout the year. And if you are on these groups, then you know that I've been searching for a Vinyl Cape Jawa. The Vinyl Cape Jawa was first released in 1978 on the first wave of the Star Wars figures on the 12A figure card backs and was quickly replaced by the cloth cape Jawas by the time the 12B cardbacks were released, although there are some occurrences where the vinyl cape Jawas were released later on Star Wars cardbacks. The vinyl cape Jawa came with an orange-brown cape and a V1 solid blue-black Jawa blaster. The only solid black Jawa blaster is from the Glasslight factory and came with the original Han Solo from Brazil. The original Leia figure from Brazil was also paired with a Glasslight silver Jawa blaster. The vinyl cape on this action figure is highly reproduced, with most of the early reproductions being cut downs of the Obi-Wan Kenobi cape. But the main ways to tell if the cape is original, first by checking how the arms fit through the holes. There should be a very snug fit in the Jawa's arms to the holes, and Obi-Wan cut capes to fit a Jawa's are loose and don't fit snugly. The color of the cape should be the exact same color of the Jawa figure mold, so if you place an Obi-Wan cape on a Jawa, the tint of the reddish brown won't be exactly the same. The next way to tell is by the bottom of the cape and the distance from the foot to where the cape ends. The distance should be about three to four millimeters above the feet. And by far the best and the final piece to determining the authenticity of a vinyl cape Jawa is almost at the microscopic level. And it's by looking very closely at the waffle pattern either on the inside or outside of the cape. And the Vinyl Cape Jawa has been known to have been carded with the waffle pattern either on the outside or the inside of the cape. By taking a magnifying glass, you can see that there is a waffle pattern on the cape. This pattern is very hard to reproduce and is the best indicator of authenticity. Also, by gently rubbing your fingernail across this pattern, you can hear a light zipping sound as your fingernail runs across the waffle pattern. Most collectors say that this is one of the most highly reproduced figures because of the market value that it brings, and the best way to obtain one is by buying it already graded and bought from a seller who is a trusted seller and the figure has been verified and cataloged through a grading service such as CAS, AFA, or UKG. So buying a loose, ungraded Jawa takes a lot of research, a lot of luck, and a lot of trust that you are buying the authentic piece and not a reproduction. Fan-made Vinyl Cape Jawas are out there and offer this figure at a fraction of the cost, and that's appealing to some collectors who want the Vinyl Cape Jawa in their collection and don't care about authenticity, but not at the high prices that the original authentic versions are. So how much does an authentic, loose, or graded Vinyl Cape Jawa go for? Carded Vinyl Cape Jawa action figures that have been graded can go as much as 40,000 at the high end graded at 80, all the way to 29,000 graded at 85. It just depends on where the market and economy are. And for these, you don't wanna buy at a price spike. An authentic graded loose Vinyl Cape Jawa are averaging at prices of 4,000 for an 85 graded figure, all the way down to 2,500 for 80 to 75 graded figures. Again, the world economy really affects the prices of these figures, so let's talk about this. So when I first began my research of this action figure, loose figures in the middle of the pandemic were reaching prices of around $4,000 that I saw. And this was at a time when the stock market and the real estate market were doing fantastic. Even though there was a pandemic going on, collectors were buying because the market economy was healthy and the demand was sky high because new collectors were coming into the space like me. But you bring it to this year, 2022. And because of a falling GDP, a war in the Ukraine and Russia, and speculated involvement with China, the market tanked, driving us into a falling GDP for two consecutive quarters. And that defines a recession. And all of that started affecting higher end action prices. Is an action figure ever worth $200,000? Well, no, it's a piece of plastic, just like any other piece of plastic. 
But once it's assigned a perceived value by a collector who knows its historical story and who knows that other collectors would love to have this in their collection, all of a sudden that value becomes real because of its limited, limited availability and its historical significance in toy nostalgia. So once the war hit and the recession hit, prices that were once $4,000 started to trickle down to 3,000, to 2,000, to 1,500, and $1,000 in some cases. And it was during this downturn of economic events that I really started looking for a vinyl cape Jawa. And I found this one on eBay being sold for $2,000 with an offer to me for 50 bucks off. But look at how damaged the cape was. And if you're a person following the Facebook groups and posts, then you would often find me bidding on these and there were a number of them that I lost. So this one was selling for $2,100, but I'm guessing a deal was struck for slightly less. I'm guessing maybe $2,000 with shipping included would be my guess. And I was gonna bid on this one, but the price reached $1,900 and no deal was struck. So that's when I bowed out. And this one was going for a thousand pounds, but looking at the cape in the armholes, it was splitting, although the cape seemed authentic. And I also didn't know the seller, so that was the main reason why I didn't bid. And there were countless other bids that I made that didn't pan out, like this one. And this is the one that left my head scratching. Nothing against the seller, but I was bidding and made a bid for 1850 over a bid that was just placed a few seconds before I did for 1750. And at the exact same moment that the seller accepted the deal for 1750, I was in the comments in real time and made a bid about 20 seconds after the 1750 was made. If the seller would have waited 20 seconds, I guess he would have gotten an extra 100 pounds, but he saw that we were both bidding each other and only you know, 30 seconds apart from each other. So he could have got more and had us bid for a little bit more, but oh well. But I finally found a deal or no deal with a seller from Germany that I knew and that was selling uh, a vinyl cape Jawa. And I did send these photos to a few collectors and I gave them the link to the post to both vouch for the seller and to make sure that they saw the figure being sold. And once I got the green light, then that's when I started to bid. And the seller was gonna shut off the bidding at 8 p.m. New York time. So I knew I had a better chance of getting a good price pending that there wasn't too many bidders. So after I placed an initial bid of 1,100, I saw bidders starting to enter the bidding as well. 1,200, 1,300, and in a matter of minutes it went up that high. And I did have a cap and I didn't wanna go above 1,500 if I didn't have to. But then somebody put a bid in for 1500 and then somebody put a bid in for 1600 so i had to take a look at my budget and i had to look at what it was going to cost me for shipping and insurance so i decided that i could go up to 1700 with shipping and uh, insurance included so i placed in a bid and then i just had to walk away and as soon as i placed the bid everyone stopped bidding but 8 p.m came and went and I had no word from the seller and no one else was bidding. I was guessing maybe the seller wasn't satisfied with the number. I mean, it's up to the seller to decide. So I checked the post and no, it hadn't been edited to remove the honor of the 8 p.m. bid closing time. And people were already starting to congratulate me, but I didn't wanna start crossing that figure off my list just yet. So I decided to act as if I didn't get the figure and then, Early the next morning, the seller called it for me. That's it, we did it, we did it. So finally, I had one of vinyl Cape Jawa and the price was $1,700. But that was just the beginning. Now I had to make sure that it got delivered safely to me from Germany. So in times of war, a broken economy and a global pandemic, overseas mail can be very, very sketchy. And I'm pretty sure all of you who bought collectibles and action figures during the pandemic and during the war and during the ongoing crappy economy 
can attest for that. Now I did secure insurance through the delivery service and placed a dollar value through DHL that if it was lost or damaged, that I would be compensated for that item. But still, you never want to be out an item that you purchased. And I was getting notifications from the seller that he had to delay the posting. So already I had a sinking feeling in my stomach. So I waited, and then I waited, and then some personal things happened in my life. And honestly, even though it was a vinyl cape Jawa, the grail of all of my grails, I just forgot about the item, to be honest. That's how busy my life got. But then one day, a package arrived at my doorstep. Now, during this run, I have opened over a hundred packages, and I can tell you that this was the most nerve-wracked that I have ever been opening a package. Not just because this was my grail in the Vinyl Cape Jawa, but also because I was hoping I got an authentic figure, even though I had the seller send more pictures after the deal went through, and even after I sent those photos to other collectors. Plus, I knew that for this loose run, I knew that this was the last package I would be opening for this entire series. So opening this one is very special to me. But it was packed very nice and looked as though the journey made it from Europe had gone well and not busted up. And when I finally held it in my hand, it was the first time I had ever held a vinyl cape Jawa in my hand. Now I do have a cloth cape Jawa and I know how small that is, but for a figure to cost this much and feel this small in my hands, the figure I was holding all of a sudden felt like I was holding the world's smallest needle made out of the most expensive Beskar. When looking at the figure, all of the imperfections I saw were things that had already been disclosed by the seller, like the pinpoint dents in the cape in the front, the handwear, but the only thing I had concerns about was the Jawa Blaster. Now, I had stated that this Jawa came with a dark blue, black Jawa Blaster, and in the light, this looked more natural blue. But I sent out pics to some very skilled collectors, and some said that I had the correct color, but the wrong mold variant. There are three mold variants, with the first two having bumps on the action chamber. M1s have a long bump, M2s have a short bump, and M3s have no bump. Now, sadly, there is a myth that the Vinyl Cape Jawa came with a no-bump Jawa Blaster, but this is in fact false. The no-bump Jawa Blaster wasn't introduced until well into the Empire Strikes Back line of figures, so it would have never been paired with the Vinyl Cape Jawa. So a little more drama for me, but luckily my Cloth Cape Jawa was paired with a short bump Jawa Blaster, so I simply switched them. And the price on these blasters are relatively the same, and you can pick up both versions for around $30. And now I can officially say that I own a vinyl cape Jawa. So before we cross this figure off our list, let's go over this list and check out how all of these boxes were once unchecked. And what seemed as such an impossible journey now is completed. Every figure, all 107 that was on my list, including the variants that I wanted, and the most elusive of those, we can now cross off. The Vinyl Cape Jawa that we bought on a deal or no deal auction on Facebook for $1,768 with shipping and fees included. And now let's place this figure into our case. Our last time that we're gonna be placing a figure in that case. And we have an extension plank ready to go for this figure, the Vinyl Cape Jawa. So the question I have for you, if this was your figure, would you keep it in that case? Knowing that you've spent $1,700 to buy that figure? Or would you send it in to get graded? And what score do you think that the figure I got would get? Let me know what you think in the comments and what you would do. But for now, it stays inside that case. So that brings us to next week. Well, there is one more episode in this series and I don't collect a figure, but it's something that I think is very important. And it's about how much the total that I spent on this entire collection. And you've also asked, well, after that episode, then what's next for the channel? What's next for the series? Well, after I do next week's episode, I am going to take a small 
break. The Padawan needs a break. After 102 shows every week, week in and week out, yeah, I need a little break. Now, you're still gonna be seeing shorts uploaded. I think I have those running until the end of the year. But as for regular episodes, I think I'm gonna take a two week or maybe a month off just to regather and just to enjoy what I just did. There are way too many stories to tell about the vintage Star Wars and the vintage Star Wars collection. And I hope that you'll join me for the next set of series that comes up. This channel is devoted to vintage and always will be. Whether it be the vintage movies, vintage news, vintage clips, vintage toys, for sure. And it will definitely include the research and the production value that you guys are used to, at least from this channel. And every once in a while, I'll even post some videos about my Ahsoka focus and some modern action figures. And I will always strive to make my channel better. So whatever comes next, just know that I will always be creating content that is fun for me, that pushes me artistically, that pushes me as a storyteller. But most of all, I hope that it's educational and entertaining for you, the viewers out there. Because this channel has really turned into an educational channel. And the mantra and the goal of this channel is to let new and seasoned collectors know about the vintage line that they collect, the history and the passion of why we all collect. Not just celebrating the beauty and the coolness of the action figures, but getting deeper and deeper into the nostalgia, the history, and what makes those action figures so special. And I'm not just hoping to spark interest in collectors that have done it since the 70s, but I'm hoping to spark interest in a new generation of collectors and let them know the history and why we love these action figures. And for new generations of collectors out there who have yet to stumble upon this video series, I hope that you can go through this series, see what I did, and use this as a simple benchmark to one day do what I did as well. And yes, I am both proud and relieved that this journey has come to an end. I can finally sit back in this chair, look back at that collection case, and know that each figure inside that case has a story. And some of those figures came from you who are watching now. And I want to thank each and every one of you who did. You know who you are. And for those collectors, YouTube channels, Facebook administrators and moderators, and people running toy conventions who supported me, believed in me, asked me to come to their store, sent me figures and gave me great deals. And they also gave me great advice about collecting. You know who you are and I wanna say thank you because you have meant a great deal to me. And for all of you out there who are watching, who subscribe to me on YouTube and Instagram, thank you for taking the time to watch these episodes, to write to me and give me your thoughts in the comments. And especially those of you who have been with this channel from the beginning. All of you watching, you're why I make these videos. You guys make it fun. And I love it when you give me advice, you give me critiques, and you give me extra bonus info in those comments on my Facebook group or you direct message me on Instagram. When you guys talk, I listen, so thank you for that. And finally, to my YouTube channel members, you guys make these videos possible. Thank you for your support, for watching the early access videos and giving me feedback before the public sees it. You guys join my member only live streams and give me honest feedback. I really want to thank you guys because you guys make this possible. This year, this entire year, has been both rewarding and the most challenging thing that I have ever done. And during this year, I have gone through a multitude of heartbreaking events, some challenging losses, all the way up to the most best experiences of my life and the best times of my life this year. And I hope that this coming year is gonna bring more of great challenges, great experiences, and great friendships. And I am gonna be moving studios, so that will be a small change, but I will still be the same, the studio will be a little bit better, and the action figures will still be there. So I hope all of you can go back from episode one to episode 102 and use this series as a reference guide. And I hope all of you can join my new adventures and my new series once those start up. I just need a little break. But the next episode, we're gonna go over how much exactly I spent on that collection and we are gonna go down to the exact penny of what I spent. But for now, this journey is over. And for a year, I was honestly 
a kid in the best toy shop in the galaxy. And I'm glad I started as a beginning collector and I will forever be the Padawan collector. And as always, my friends, thank you and I will see you on the next journey. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.